Okay, so we're going to be finishing up chapter eight. This is a part B. Be sure to look uh, in the comments below for the link for uh, part A for chapter eight. Uh, in addition, if you also look at the playlist, all the videos uh, will be displayed there as well. Um, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please be sure to subscribe. This way, when the, the new videos are posted, you guys will be notified. And uh, if you have any questions, email me uh, at uh, my email address, which you can find below also in the comments or through YouTube. Uh, or you can just leave some uh, questions in the comments area. So we in the previous session, we looked at synovial joints. Uh, and now we're going to be looking at five main synovial joints, which are the knee, the shoulder, elbow, hip, and jaw. And the reason I'm going to be looking at uh, at these ones in specific is because synovial joints are very diverse. Uh, they all have the, the six general uh, dis distinguishing characteristics that we talked about in the previous lecture. Uh, but uh, some of them, they also, have some, they also have unique structural features, some abilities, and also we're going to be looking at some of the weaknesses uh, in uh, these five uh, uh, main synovial joints. Now, the knee joint, this is the largest and most complex joint that we have in our body. Now, despite its being only a single joint cavity, it consists of three joints in one. Now, the very first one uh, is this intermediate one that we find between the patella and the lower end of your femur. This is the, the femoral patellar joint. Then we have the, the lateral and medial joints. Collectively, these two are known as the tibiofemoral joints. Uh, and we find this between the, the femoral condyles above and the C-shaped menisci. Uh, of the tibia below. Uh, now these menisci, they're also referred to as the semilunar cartilages. So I might be saying menisci and semilunar cartilages. Again, these terms, they can be used interchangeably. Uh, now, aside from deepening this uh, shallow tibial articular surface, the menisci, they also help uh, prevent the, the femur from rocking from side to side uh, on the tibia. Uh, also, they, they also help uh, absorb the shock that's transmitted to this knee joint. Uh, now, the weakness or, you know, about these menisci is that, that, it's that they're only attached uh, at their outer margins. And because of this, they get torn frequently due to uh, injuries. Now, although the tibiofemoral joint functionally acts as a hinge joint, uh, and you know, this will provide your extension and flexion movement, structurally, it's a bicondylar joint. So what this means is when the knee is flexed, uh, it does allow it some rotation, uh, a small degree of rotation. But at the same time, when your knee is extended, uh, it's going to prevent uh, any side-to-side -side mo movements and rotation uh, because of the strong resistance by the ligaments and um, menisci. So when you look at this illustration here, uh, so this is your knee joint. Um, this is your femur. This is the, the tibia. So this is, uh, yeah, this is your right uh, uh knee that we're looking at. Um, now, this is the patella over here. And uh, what we have over here, you can see, first of all, is this, um, the, the patella ligament, okay, that's connecting from the, the, the tibia to the patella um, inferiorly. Now, over here, you can see the anterior cruciate ligament over here, as well as the posterior cruciate ligament. Uh, that's over here. Now we'll look at some uh, other pictures. So uh, don't worry about these two ligaments, but these are uh, two of the main ligaments that gets torn during injury. Uh, here's the lateral menisci. It's been cut off. And on the other end, you're going to have the medial uh, menisci that you'll see. Uh, and we'll look at their, these, their insertion points also. But the other thing you want to notice is, is all these bursa that you see, see over here. Uh, the knee, it has the most bursa of, out of any joint. Uh, it's, there's more than more than a dozen bursa that you're going to be finding at this joint. So as we move through, um, move forward, we'll, we'll see those. Uh, we'll be discussing about those. Here's another uh, view, superior view of your right tibia. So in this picture, you can see the articular surfaces uh, of the tibia. Uh, so this is your medial meniscus over here. Okay, the medial meniscus, and this is your lateral meniscus. Uh, you can see the posterior cruciate ligament uh, over here, uh, and you can see the anterior cruciate ligament. Uh, this is the transverse ligament over here. It's not labeled, but uh, we'll probably see it later on in the, in the in, in pro perhaps in another image uh, illustration that we look at. So again, these menisci, in a, you know, along with the, the the ligaments that we have, your your medial. Uh, uh, la uh, your medial collateral and uh, your lateral collateral ligaments. Uh, this is what prevents 
you know, this rocking uh, of your femur. So this is kind of what uh, both those things, they helped uh, displacement uh, medially and laterally uh, of the femur at this joint over here. Uh, if you guys have uh, the the A and P flicks, uh, um, if you have the DVD, be sure to look at this. It'll give you a pretty good illustration or video of, of how this joint works. Uh, also, you can uh, go online to the the Pearson website uh, to look at this as well. Now, one of the things about the knee joint is uh, about its uh, joint capsule. Now, it's relatively <laughs> take two. Now, one of the things about the knee joint is uh, it's uh, take three. Now, one of the things about the the knee joint is that its joint capsule is relatively thin. Uh, in addition, it's only present uh, on the sides and the posterior aspects of the knee, where it ends up covering bulk of the femoral and tibial condyles. Anteriorly, where the capsule is absent, we have three broad ligaments that run from the patella to the tibia below. Now, these are the patellar ligament and they're flanked by the medial and lateral patellar retiniculi. Now, these merge uh, into the articular capsule on each side. Now, the patellar ligament and the, retin uh, the, the retinicula, uh, these are actually continuations of the tendons of your quadricep muscle. Uh, now, quadriceps, this is the, the bulk, the, 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 the main part of your, the, the front part of your thigh, your anterior part of your thigh. Uh, so that's a huge muscle uh, that's present. Um, and uh, doctors will tap this patellar ligament to test your knee jerk reflex. Uh, in addition to that, as I mentioned earlier, the knees, they have at least 12 bursa uh, that are associated uh, with it. So uh, here you have your quadricep muscle over here. And uh, coming off the quadricep muscle, you can see your lateral patellar retinic uh, retiniculum here. And then you can see your, uh, your, your medial uh, patellar retiniculum over here. This is the, again, this is the tendon of the quadriceps femoris muscle over here that are attached to the patella superiorly. And then uh, also you'll see uh, uh, inferiorly over here, you have the patellar ligament uh, that's attaching from the, the tibia to the patella. Um, then here in this picture, you can clearly see the fibular collateral ligament. And here you can see the, or an another term for this is a lateral collateral ligament. Uh, and then you can see uh, the, the medial collateral ligament, which is also known as the tibial collateral ligament. Make sure you guys know that uh, both these terms, again, they're, they're interchangeable. Uh, that uh, being tibial collateral and medial collateral ligament, as well as uh, lateral collateral and fibular collateral ligaments. You can use either or. Uh, they're referring to the same structures. Now, all three types of joint ligaments, they stabilize and straighten the capsule of your knee joint. Uh, the ligaments of two of these types, the capsular and extracapsular, they act to prevent hyperextension of the knee. So uh, they're stretched taut when your knee is extended. Now, the extracapsular fibular and tibial collateral ligaments, they're very critical in preventing lateral and medial rotation when your knee is extended. The tibial collateral ligament, it runs from the medial epicondyle of the femur to the medial condyle of the tibial shaft below, and it gets fused to the medial meniscus. The oblique popliteal ligament, uh, this is actually part of the tendon of the semi-membraneous muscle. Uh, this uh, fuses with the joint capsule and it helps stabilize the posterior aspect of your knee joint. Uh, then we have the, the arcuate popliteal ligament. Uh, this arcs superiorly from the head of the fibula over the popliteus uh, muscle and reinforces the joint capsules, uh, reinforces the joint capsule posteriorly. All right, so in this illustration here, we can clearly see uh, this um, the oblique popliteal ligaments that we talked about in the last slide. In addition to that, you can see the arcuate popliteal ligaments, and then also we have our uh, your tibial collateral ligament and your uh, your fibular collateral ligament, or in other words, you have your medial collateral and your lateral collateral ligament ligaments. The knee's intracapsular ligaments, these are called the cruciate ligaments because they cross each other and they form an X uh, in the notch between the femoral condyles. This is how they come up with this name, cruciate, because cruci, it means cross. Um, now, they act to help prevent the anterior and posterior displacement of the articular surfaces. In addition to that, uh, they help uh, secure the articulating bones when we stand up. Now, these ligaments, 
uh, they are in the joint capsule. However, uh, they're outside of the synovial cavity. The anterior cruciate ligament, also known as the ACL, it attaches to the anterior intracondylar area of the tibia. From there, it passes posteriorly, laterally, and then upwards to attach to the femur on the medial side of its lateral condyle. Now, this ligament, it prevents forward sliding of the tibia on the femur, in addition to preventing hyperextension of the knee. Now, the posterior cruciate ligament, this is the stronger of the two. It's attached to the posterior intracondylar area of the tibia, and it passes anteriorly, medially, and superiorly to attach to the femur on the lateral side of the medial condyle. Now, this ligament, it prevents backward displacement of the tibia and forward sliding of the femur. Now, in this illustration, uh, we see your femur over here, you have your tibia here, the fibula here, and that's the patella. Now, uh, this is your lateral collateral ligament here. This is your medial collateral ligament over here. Uh, and then we have your uh, ACL, your anterior cruciate ligament. Uh, and then you have your posterior cruciate ligament. So again, notice that this anterior cruciate ligament uh, is attached to the anterior intercondylar uh, area over here. And then the posterior uh, uh, cruciate ligament was going to be attaching to the posterior intercondylar area of the tibia. Um, now, we don't have, this is an anterior view, view so it's difficult to see the posterior, uh, where the, the, the posterior cruciate ligament attaches to uh, at both points. Uh, but let's see if you can, uh, if there's another image, we'll, we'll get a better look at uh, it's, uh, where it's attaching to uh, posteriorly uh, on the femur, as well as the tibia for the posterior cruciate ligament. Uh, again, this, uh, this is another example over here. If you guys have the video, please be sure to... Uh, uh, to you know, use your DVD or go to the website and click on this and uh, you'll be able to see this animation uh, that's uh, uh, showing, uh, uh, again, th this joint. Again, this is another picture over here. And over here you can see uh, this is the, the, the medial uh, condyle of the femur. This is the lateral condyle of the femur, femur over here. Again, you're seeing the patella here. Um, you can see the menisci, the medial menisci, and this is going to be your, your, the, the lateral menisci over there. And, uh, and you can see the anterior cruciate ligament over here, and then you can see part of the posterior cruciate ligament over here also, uh, even though it's not uh, labeled. Now, I'm using uh, Netter's 3D Atlas. If you go online, Google Netter's 3D Atlas, and you'll be able to land on this website also. So this is your, your knee joint over here. This is your femur, this is your patella, this is your tibia, and this is your fibula over here. Uh, this is a patellar ligament, and I'm going to move the patella and the patellar ligament out of the way. Uh, so in order to do that, I just go over here, and there we go. Move this out of the way. Now, this is your uh, medial uh, collateral ligament. I'm moving this out of the way. And then this is the, the articular uh, capsule. I'm going to move this out of the way. Uh, now I'm going to start, okay, so over here, now you can see your anterior cruciate ligament. Okay, so notice where it's attaching to anteriorly, uh, to this part of your, uh, anteriorly is attaching to your right femur over here. And this is your, the lateral condyle of the right uh, femur. Now, I'm going to start rotating this. And as you rotate, I'm going to start removing some other structures as well. So, hold on, I cannot move it. There we go. So again, I'm going to move this part of the articular capsule over there also, and then uh, I'm going to move this part of the articular capsule here as well. And then this is my uh, uh, lateral collateral ligament, which I'm going to move out of there. And then I want to start rotating it further. So I'm going to click there, and here I go. There we go. Now, this right over here, this is the, the oblique popliteal ligament. And I'm going to move this out of the way. And then we have, uh, so that was, a, the, and this is your right, uh, uh, the arcuate popliteal ligament. I'll move that out of the way. And then we have, let me try to zoom in a little bit more. Whoa, too much. OK. Uh, all right, we'll just stay at this part then. Um, I just started using this, uh, so I'm not very efficient with this. But uh, let's move forward. All right, so again, this is your, uh, this is going to be your medial condyle. This is going to be your lateral condyle over here. Uh, so right over here, again, this is going to be your posterior cruciate ligament. Okay, that's your posterior cruciate ligament. And then I'm going to move this out of the way. This is the, the posterior meniscal femoral ligament. 
this is gone and there we go now you can see that uh, the uh, well here I can't see it yet let me rotate it a little bit no not like that there we go okay so you can see the posterior cruciate ligament it's attaching to this medial uh, the the posterior aspects of this uh, the the medial uh, the medial condyle okay the wall of this medial condyle uh, so this is where it's going to attach to over here and then it's going to uh, go backwards and uh, it's going to attach uh, to the uh, the posterior intercondylar area of the tibia over here okay so this is the posterior intercondylar area of the tibia there that's going to attach over here and over here so again these are the two attachment points for the uh, your uh, uh, posterior cruciate ligament. Now, what they're not showing you over here is this. Your anterior cruciate ligament is going to come and attach itself right over here. Okay, this part. Uh, so yeah, this here, this is the intercondylar fossa. Uh, so anyway, it's going to come and attach itself to this wall of the uh, the, the the lateral uh, condyle. So if I continue to rotate this. Here we go. You can see uh, yeah, this is the transverse ligament. Can I remove it? There we go. I can remove the transverse ligament over there. And there you go. You can see the right uh, here, the anterior ligament over here. Uh, All right, yeah, there, there we go. This is your right anterior ligament. So again, um, your, I'm sorry, your, your anterior uh, cruciate ligament over here. So it's not attaching to the anterior, so it's going backwards. They, see, you can see it over here. Uh, it's not too good of a drawing. I don't know why they don't have it correctly, but it's going to go and attach. And let's try to rotate it now and see if you can see it here. I have an idea. Let me see. And now let's try to rotate it. Maybe you can see it now. There you go. So, well, not really. So, and there. Anyways, what's going to happen is uh, this ligament, this ligament is going to come and attach itself right over here. Okay, this is your anterior cruciate ligament. So notice how it forms a cross. Okay, this one's going like this, and that one's coming across. Say both of anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments, they attach to the uh, to the so the anterior cruciate ligament, ligament is going to attach to the lateral uh, condyle of the femur, and then the posterior cruciate ligament is going to attach to the uh, the, uh, the medial condyle uh, of the femur. So when they uh, this crisscross that they do, this is what uh, forms this cross. All right, uh, so. That's it for the knee joint.